Hey friends, my name is David Schimmel, and today I'm going to show you how to make kick drums from first principles using the free VST Vital and some basic Ableton techniques. So let's get into it. To start, what even is a kick drum? It's basically a beater that's activated by a foot pedal, and that strikes a tightly stretched drum head, which then vibrates at a certain frequency. And those two components together create the overall kick drum sound. So you can see it in this uh, slow motion video of a kick drum being hit. Boom. Now let's take a look at a commercially available kick drum sample. This one comes from the Cymatics free house pack, and I'll put a link to that in the description. It sounds like this. Let's look at a few characteristics of the sample. First, we have the duration, which at 120 beats per minute is about one beat long, though only half of that or one eighth note actually has any sound content. The rest is silence. Second, we'll take a look at the overall volume change. You can see here we start way up top, quickly come down to about halfway, rise back up again slightly to this plateau, and then gradually trail off. And third, let's take a look at the frequency content of the sample. Look at the low register here in the EQ as I play the sample. You'll see it kind of swoops down really quickly, which gives the kick its thump that you really feel in your chest. Next, take a look at the mid to high range frequency response. It's more of a static shape, indicating that the pitch isn't changing that much, but it does have these notches throughout the frequency bands, and those help give this kick drum its distinctive sound compared to others. And finally, you'll notice that at the top, it rolls off, so there's not a lot of energy in the highest frequencies that humans can hear. Finally, if we zoom in on the sample, we can see here at the beginning that the peaks and troughs are very close together. The waveform itself is rather jagged, indicating the presence of a lot of high frequency information. This jaggedness gradually gives way to a smooth, gentle sine wave, which we perceive as a pure tone without a lot of noise in it. You'll also notice that the waveform is bunched more closely together here than at the end, which again indicates that the pitch of the sine wave is decreasing. So with that, we now have our game plan. We'll build our kick drum sound from two components. The first will represent the impact of the beater on the drum head, and it'll be a very short sound with a lot of high frequency content that decays to zero very quickly. The second component will represent the oscillation of the drum head itself, and it'll have a more gradual attack before plateauing and then decaying to zero. If we combine these two elements, we should get a nice punchy kick drum sound that really gets your audience moving. Let's start with the low pitched layer first. Create a new MIDI track by pressing Control shift t and solo it so we don't hear the cymatic sample while we're working on our sound. Select two beats and press Control shift m to create a new MIDI clip. Then input a low note, let's say F0, that's always a good choice. Drag it out so that it's one quarter note long. Then click the MIDI clip and press Control L to loop it so that we don't have to manually trigger the note over and over again while we're working. Then add Vital onto the track. And if you press play in Ableton, you'll hear the default saw wave sound over and over again. To create the lower layer, start by clicking the init label on Oscillator 1's waveform and select basic shapes to load in a sine wave. Then drag the phase randomization to zero so that the waveform will start in the same place every time we play a note, giving us a consistent kick drum sound. To create the shape of the volume envelope for this sound, drag the level down to zero and then go over to LFO1, change the mode to envelope and the frequency to one quarter. If you remember our beautiful MS Paint drawing, you'll recall that we started with a gradual rise up followed by a plateau, so double click to add a new node to the envelope, drag it to about here, and finally we decayed to zero just past the halfway point, so we'll add one more node, drag it here, and finally put LFO1 on the oscillator one level, and that sounds like this.
Let's save our progress by clicking here and giving our sound a name. Now let's shape the pitch of the lower layer. Select LFO2, change the mode to envelope and the frequency to one quarter, then drag this node all the way to the left and add a new one just before the halfway point. Drag LFO2 onto the pitch transpose for oscillator one, then go into the matrix and the slider is initially set to 48 semitones, which is a bit higher than we need. So right click, select enter value and type in 24. Finally, we're going to adjust the slope of this curve to dial in the sound that we want. So uh, press play to hear the loop and then adjust to your taste. Sounds good to me. Finally, to give our lower layer a little bit of extra snap, we're gonna add one more pitch envelope. This one will make very short, so it's just at the beginning of the sound. So go to LFO3, mode to envelope, frequency to one quarter, drag this node all the way to the left, and then add a new node very, very close to it. And drag the slope down quite a bit. And then put LFO3 back on transpose, and this time when we go into the matrix, we're gonna max out LFO3's transpose and get this. Now, if you drag this up high, you'll start getting uh, more of a lasery sound, which is kind of cool and works in some genres, but not quite what we're going for here. So let's bring it back down. Sounds good to me. Now let's create the top layer for our kick. We'll use the sample oscillator in Vital. So turn off oscillator one for now and turn on the sample oscillator. It's set to white noise by default, which is what we want because it has a lot of high frequency content. To create the volume shape for the noise, bring the level all the way to zero and then go to LFO four. Mode to envelope, frequency to one quarter and drag that top node all the way to the left. We want it to be very short, so again, create a new node and bring that very close to the left as well. Then drag LFO4 onto the level. We get this. That's still a bit more noise than we need, so let's bring the slope down to create a nice clean tick. Perfect. Let's shape the noise layer further by adding some effects. But first, change the output of oscillator one from filter one to direct out. That way the effects will only be applied to the noise layer, leaving our low thump clean and untouched. Go to the effects section and turn on the distortion plugin. Bring the drive up slightly to add some grit and gain to the click, and then add LFO4 onto the drive. This will bring up the volume even further and make the transient sound that much snappier. Finally, to get rid of some of the super high frequencies that can sometimes sound a bit unnatural, we'll turn on the filter on the distortion in post mode, bring down the resonance all the way, bring the cutoff, cutoff all the way up, and gradually bring the cutoff down until you get a sound that you like. Finally, let's turn the low thump back on and see how it all sounds together. We finished the main programming tasks for the sound, so now let's check our work visually. This can be especially useful if you're mixing on systems like headphones or laptop speakers that don't have a lot of bass response. Close Vital and go back to Ableton, then create a new audio track by pressing Ctrl T. Change the input on the track from external in to resampling and arm the track for recording. Click to where the MIDI note begins, press F9 to start recording, and then press spacebar to end it once the sample has been recorded. If we compare our sound to the reference sample, we'll notice a few key differences. First, the click is not as loud as it should be relative to the thump, and the gap between the click and the thump could be more filled in. The plateau of the thump is longer than it needs to be, and its pitch also does not change as much during the plateau as our reference. So let's go back to Vital and tweak some of our settings to optimize our sound. Go back to Vital and we'll raise the volume of the click by bringing down the volume of the thump. So hover over oscillator one's level knob and drag the LFO one amount down somewhat. 
Bring the overall volume of vital back up to compensate, but don't go into the red. Now we'll fill in the gap between the click and the thump by bringing up the slope of the attack for LFO1. And then we'll shorten the plateau of the thump. Finally, we'll make the pitch swoop a little bit more during the plateau by going to LFO2, inserting another node, bringing its, the slope of the first segment up and the slope of the second segment back down. Save your work so that you have a template to start from next time you make a kick drum. And now let's resample our sound one more time to see the impact of our changes. Much better. We'll make two final changes to our sample so that it's production ready. Go to the beginning of the sample and grab the left side of it and drag it to the right until you're just before the first of the taller peaks. Then go to the upper left corner of the sample to the square icon and click and drag it to the right slightly to fade in the clip so we don't get any pops. Click and drag the sample over to the beginning of the measure. Then turn off the warp mode for the sample and press Control J to consolidate it into a new clip. Turn off the warp mode again and double click on the gain slider to normalize the sample so it's as loud as it can be without clipping. Let's hear what that sounds like. And then compared to our reference sample, I like ours better. To save your sample for later, go to the left sidebar and scroll down to user library under places. Click and drag the clip into the pane and give it a name. You can click the icon next to the name to preview the sample. So now you know how to make a kick drum from the ground up and can craft a bespoke sound for your next dance floor banger. If you've enjoyed our time here together, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you here next time. Happy producing!